when we look at timing today and years and seasons, I did, and you all used to, I used to celebrate uh, years based on the Gregorian calendar and try and hear from people in terms of what this year mean and uh, so I can get a word and you could get a word whereas what to expect during that year but the meaning all were based on a Catholic bishop calendar that was a revision of a who Julian Julius Caesar calendar not the Hebrew calendar see Elohim never was El or God of Rome he is El or God of the Hebrews. Yehudites, y'all catch me? So you can see how this cultural mixing, which you can't mix holiness or the kingdom with no culture. We are here to colonize the world with the culture of the kingdom. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, so um, as we receive truth, if the spirit of truth is in us, we can more easily make the transition. And we don't have to argue and fight with people. Just give them truth and fact and do what you want to do with it. That's it. As for me, I've chosen to follow the kingdom. Y'all catch it now? That's with everything. So we have dual citizenship. We are first kingdoms or citizens of who? The kingdom of what? Heaven. So we have a king. He dominates our lives. His word is law. His word comes first. That's over in the book of Acts. Uh, the word said in chapter 5 we rather obey El than men that's what the disciples the scholars that were their mindset they will always obey the word relative than you know relative to you know the law and stuff like that they choose to die be persecuted in order to obey the word if the word conflicted with the law of the land you see it now in other words things, different lifestyles and way of doing things, they wouldn't allow the government to force them into doing something that was against the teaching of the word. You see it? Okay, so that's what that means. So as we deal with this year meaning, I need to say these things so we can get a better understanding of why it's so important for us to get this key of the kingdom. I'm teaching a key of the kingdom relative to the importance of time and meaning and years and days they are very important now we have been taught based on catholicism uh lace theology that the church is in rulership now and we set whatever we want to set we're under grace we do what we want to do the heck if i don't want to do it i don't do it as long as the lord love it I, i'm good <laughs> that's so incorrect that's a de denunciation of the kingship of your lord so based on our democratic mindset in our culture, sometimes it's difficult for us to grasp the concept of kingdom. So it's normal to have problems understanding this or realizing the importance of what we are doing. We are purposely bringing people who have been born again over to a kingdom mindset because the church mindset has not done the job. In our own city, we're known as the city of churches, right? In our own city, the economic equality is so unjust that it's pathetic. As a matter of fact, the poverty rate in our city is one of the highest in the nation. Terrible. But we got full of churches, though, religion everywhere. And the same people claim to be Christians of one ethnicity have yet failed to bring the common access to wealth to the other people of a different ethnic ethnicity. Now I'm going to put it real plain. Don't get offended. The white Christians have failed to disseminate the wealth to the black Christians in our city. Because if the city is a city of churches, correct? If that was the answer, then relative to if the church is what is supposed to be relative to the kingdom then everybody in the kingdom care what color you are will have equal access to wealth equal not based on your race your neighborhood uh none of those hidden 
discriminatory laws that's in place that we don't know of. None of that would be in place. As a matter of fact, Memphis would be called a holy kingdom city if the churches here were actually kingdom minded. There would be no discrimination. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be here because the so-called church would dominate and take over with the kingdom. So that right there will prove that the church is not the answer. The kingdom government is the answer. We got to get the believers unchurched and into the kingdom. <laughs> the proof is there. The facts are there. Here's another one. African, African Americans, those that living in Shelby County, Tennessee, if you didn't know it, you are not the minority in this city or county. You are the minority nation or nationally or nationwide, but you are not the minority race in the city. You are the majority. But you, we are also the majority that's under the poverty rate. Now, how, why is that? Slavery mentality mindset. We haven't woke up and understand that we are the majority. Therefore, we should be ruling and we are not. We shouldn't be suffering from the poverty, the worst poverty rate and financial conditions and murder and shooting. We shouldn't be suffering from that. Laws should be passed to benefit us, should it not? Laws are there, but they're not benefiting. benefiting. As a matter of fact, Hispanics taking their place. Because we still think we are the minorities in a city where we are majority. And if the church was doing what the church claimed to be doing, and if the other races really love their brothers as they say, then it wouldn't be like it is. So racism primarily, or races primarily are in the church. Okay? I didn't say the kingdom. Because under the kingdom, there's only one king. No superiority complex relative to any one race. All right? And we think also that if we go become a member of a religious Christian church that's passed by a white pastor and got white people there, we're part of a multicultural congregation, and we really swell our heads up and think we're doing something. But your own people still suffer. Until you love yourself and folk that look like you, you can't properly love nobody else. Got scripture on that also. Okay, so now, we kind of getting where we're going now. So it's very important to understand the culture, understand Christianity, understand the kingdom and the kingdom culture, ambassadors, saints, understand these terms because they are important. And I know it's a monster to deal with, but guess what? We have power that have been given to us by creator of everything and everybody. So now, with that being said, let's get into this, okay? So on the Hebrew calendar, the one that Elohim gave to men and Constantine and the Romans and the Greeks were successful in uprooting these seasons, these times, out of the minds of the European Greek Roman churches, not the ones that was uh, uh, beyond the realm of the authority of Rome. We need to catch that because we, we have been taught European history. We have been, America's based on European history. It's not based on world history. Many, thousands, millions of Yehudites, many of those who got born again, never were under the realm and authority of Rome, never switched to their calendar. They kept all the special feasts and celebration days that were on the biblical calendar. They never vacillated to the other side. Never did. But we don't hear about that. Because if you hear about that, that'll wake us up in terms of uh, breaking away from the pagan religion and getting connected back to our what? Hebrew roots. So um, 5779 on the Hebrew calendar, calendar Elohim gave to man and not a Catholic bishop. It's year 5779. Now, I'm going to do a brief review on some thoughts because this year began actually during the month of Nisan or Abib. Seven months ago, the year began. Now, the civil, civil year was initiated a couple of days ago, but there is no scripture evidence that the year began in Tishri. It's a civil, cal civil calendar year, and the Yehudites, or those converts to Judaism, they were responsible for that also, just like you got the Gregorian calendar. I'm just going to show it to you. The year began according to scripture, month of Nisan or Abib. Now, it's very significant uh, 
uh, why Abib and Nisan, those terms were used because relative to scripture and the mindset of Elohim, he don't go on names when it comes to uh, seasons and times and days. He only deal with numbers. The first day or the first month of this year. He never uh, labeled the months or days with names. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all those are Greek Roman based based on these pagan gods that they worship. And so every last one of them, even the months, every last one of them has nothing to do with scripture. When you look at scripture, you are solely, purely looking at numbers. And I got a teaching come up on the revelation of the Sabbath. We're going to deal with that also because too many people still fight about a day and then neglecting the importance of the covenant of the day. You're catching it now? All right, so we have to change our minds. So I go through a process of uh, change of thinking. So you can't go on the internet and find out what a number means if it's not scripturally based and the source is not from scripture and govern your life the rest of the year based on it. Well, Pastor, what, what, what's the meaning of this year so I know what to expect? Well, it's 2018, so you can, you can expect everything to be lean and mean. That, that's religion. <laughs> you, you seeing it? Because Elohim is not bound to a man-made date and times. It's very important we get this. We have to look at the Hebrew calendar, those numbers, and what those numbers mean. And when we look at those numbers, we have to go back to Scripture. When we go back to Scripture, we go back to the alphabet or the alphabet words that spell words, and we'll see that each alphabet or each word in the Hebrew has a corresponding number that goes with it, and that word will tell you what the number means. So when you get the meaning of numbers, you still got to go back to the word, the one who created everything, who created time, the word is. Okay? Got to go back to the word. All right, so here's a, uh, one, a, a point about numbers. I want to bring this in because we're dealing with the year of choice and consequence as a result of choice. We, actually, we talked, I looked at my notes, I taught it back in the first of the year doing Nissan. So I'm going to teach it again since the minds of those who at least can acknowledge that we are not to govern our lives by the Gregorian calendars and get those year meanings, but we are to go govern our lives by the scripture Hebrew calendar. But, we, you know, still thinking that this is the beginning of the year is actually not as a silver year. Our year began back in Nissan or Bill. Okay? Now, all right, so the power of numbers. Here's the power of numbers. And again, numbers meaning are extracted from the word itself, himself. So the power of numbers, numbers bring order, accountability, and responsibility. That's what numbers does. Bring what? Order, accountability, and what else? Responsibility. The, the, one of the most powerful uh, sources in government and uh, principle of government that's in any culture is economics. Is economics. People can be in a state of wealthiness and the government be in a state of poverty because of a broken economic system and the whole country is deemed as a poverty-stricken country. You see? So economics, economy, as a matter of fact, look at our country, America. America, they say that America is what it is because El, God blessed America. But if you look at the truth behind it, America is what it is today because of economy. All right, let's, let's, let's rewind time. Leave those African Jews where they were. Don't ship nobody over here to do no free labor and see where America would be today. America is where it is today because of the evil demonic forced labor of those Akabulums, Edenites, was called Africans who were sold during slave trade and many other countries are benefited and the, the labor was free. That's why the South and the North was having so many problems, because the Southerners, you know, primary slave country, and, and the slaves were bringing in so much money and economic power that it was a threat to the North. Y'all catch me now? See, war has to be financed. If you don't have gold, I was watching one picture, and this wicked queen was saying, but well, we all know that gold is the success of war. If you don't have no gold, you don't win no wars. Just tell the truth right out in the mo right out in the open. Yeah. It takes money to finance war. If you don't have money, you can have all the people you want to. 
you don't have the money to finance it, you're going to lose. Y'all catching this? Yeah. So it's not that Elohim blessed some people who would force other people into slavery and treat them like dogs and less than human beings. How could he bless something like that? That's against his nature, his holiness, his makeup. But we've been told that based on religious people. So we can continue on to flow in that culture of religion that ties to the culture. America is not here today because of the, the slavery and the free labor of African Americans. Without that, it wouldn't be like it, like it is today. Now that's fact. That's true truth and fact, period. Close the door, case closed. All right? That's how important economics is, so we need to see that. So numbers is the foundation of what? Economics. Order, accountability, and responsibility. All right, so we're in 5779. Here's some sources of thought. I'm not going to go all the way through them. I taught them last session. And this source of thought is saying that Tishri is based on Exodus 24 and Exodus 23 when he talked about the Feast of In Gathering, gathering with a Sukkot, a tabernacle. And uh, this verse was saying this should be the end of your years. Well, we brought out that he wasn't talking about a calendar year because that had already been set. And, and the father's not bipolar. He don't change his mind like that. He was talking about the end of the year of the season producing, fruit producing season of those trees. In gathering was the fruit trees. That's what time we're going into now. So each product had a season that it would produce, okay? So that source of thought from this particular uh, scholar, they just put it there, but they also said that there's no scripture proof to prove out that Elohim said himself, that Tishri would be the beginning of the year, okay? Yeah. And remember the Khazar, Ashkenazi Jews got in there, went to Jerusalem, drove the black Jews, brown Jews out of there, took over and everything that they were doing also based on a European-centric type thought or idea. Now here's another one uh, dealing with, um, yeah, that's economy. Now I know what I was gonna say. Yeah, years of, based on economy, I just said, that's what, I don't wanna get back into it, but also Nissan and Abib uh, either farming, farming, or agricultural term. That a bill, the when the fruit uh, first, I mean when the wheat begin to uh, bud, it's dealing with agricultural and it's dealing with farming. Why? Because the whole economic system was based on farming and agriculture. You see it now? How important numbers are? That that's why those names were used. But relative to the father, he wasn't concerned about no names. He was looking at numbers. That's why he said this month should be the beginning. What you call Nissan, you know based on economy and agriculture. All right, so that, that, what that is uh, talking about right there. Now let's go to the next one. And uh, there's a history about the Babylonians, and they did the same thing during the month of, the Hebrew month of Tishri, similar to what the Hebrews were doing, and they picked up some of their stuff. And I taught that on Wednesday. So you can go back and review that teaching and you will get it. Now, since this year is, is the meaning based on scripture numbers, 5779, let me go back to that first one, is what? The revelation of what? Choice and what else? Consequences. I want you to write these points down. I'm not going to teach them all today, but I want you to have them. Dealing with choice. Choice and consequences relative to the choice. That, we get extract that meaning from that, 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 that uh, letter, Hebrew letter word, tet. It's the ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Tet. That, you spell that word out, and it's going to tell you what nine means. You don't have to guess at it. You don't have to guess at it at all. All right? So dealing with choice, I got seven points. I'm going to make sure you take a picture, write them down, do whatever you need to do, because this is very, very important. Of course, we're in the seventh month of the year, okay? The seventh month, and what's significant, Yom Kippur takes place this month, dealing with the covenant that he established with his people to uh, cover sin, for another year. That's when Iran, the priest, they lay hands on the scapegoat doing Yom Kippur, the trumpet sounding, you know, transfer the sins of the people to the scapegoat, let the scapegoat go out in the wilderness. All that took place during the seven month tissue. All right? And also the seven month tissue, we're going to have the birth of Yeshua. It's, not, it's the seven month of the year. Okay? The birth of Yeshua is going to take place. That's this month. Uh, next week, I believe, you have Sukkot, the uh, celebration of the tabernacle in the gathering or uh, booth. So freedom of choice. <clears throat> freedom of choice. Freedom of choice is given to all men by creating. When I say men, I'm talking about mankind. And we're dealing with choice and the consequence of it. And if you look back the past seven months, you really see 
how important uh, some things were and what happened based on the choice you made. We got seven more months to correct some stuff. This is what this number is telling us this season during this year. Consequences come with choices. All right. So er, all mankind was given freedom of choice. Now, Genesis, uh, Barashit, the book of Genesis, tells us that Elohim created mankind in his own what? Image and his, and his what else? In his likeness, right? So in his image, dealing with character. You know, image is like an imprint. When you, you, you look at, you can stamp that rock with an image or uh, inscribe an image on it. I don't care what happened, rain, sleet, snow, that image is going to remain the same. So that was, that what character is. So the first thing he did, he mocked us with his character, his characteristics, you know, holiness, righteousness. You know, that's what he mocked us with. Y'all catch it? And then he created us in his likeness. Now, likeness is a pattern of who he is. Now, relative to choice, we look at how we were built and made is based on how the creator himself is made. The father is spirit, right? But watch this. He have a mind. He have a will. He have emotions. He have a soul. Y'all catch it? And, and, and he said, Yeshua said that the father won't leave my soul in hell. Y'all catch it? And first Peter uh, three and nine says the father is not willing that any would. I mean, second Peter three and nine is not willing that any would perish, but all would come into repentance. He have a will. So in his likeness, we were created. We are spiritual beings. You catch it? And we have a free will. We have a mind. We have intellect. We have emotions. We have a free will. He created all mankind with free will. And that I'm not going to get into a heavy. I just want to go across it. But remember, in the garden or in that place in Eden, what's called Africa today, eastward in Eden, actually is northeast Africa, what's called today. There was a particular place there where there was an open heaven over that place. See, God, another meaning for garden is uh, access of light, life. Y'all catch it? God, God then is gimo, gimo mean to lift up and bound for bless. And there's a dollar and there's a noon spelling that word in the original Hebrew for God. And so it's dealing with the place that life was had access to the kingdom of heaven. And that seed of life was to reproduce and spread throughout the whole earth based on that portal, that light, that principle of the kingdom that was open unto them. It was a place of order. You seeing it? Garden also means a place of order. You plant a garden, you plant your, your greens over here, you plant your, your purple peas right there, you snap. You don't go mix everything up because when you go to harvest, you're going to have some problems, you know, and they're going to cross-pollinate. You won't have the pure fruit, pure fruit. So garden is also a place of order. The garden also was a place that man, the spirit being, male man, was to start his family. So God is also making reference to family. Y'all catch it? But now notice when he put him there, he said, listen, you got another person here who have already violated his command and used his ability to choose to go against his man command, which he never had the freedom to choose. See, angels are not in our class. Angels were created to minister, to serve, to do, to carry out the commands of the creator. They never got a free will. If they choose to do anything else other than what they were created to do, they violated the command, the law of the king, and there was nothing left except eternal punishment or eternal separation from the father. This is why Satan, Lucifer, and all the demon imps cannot be saved. They were never, they're not created like we were. They never had that choice to use their will, yet they possess their will. And he said the spiritual being is going to be there. And, you, and he used Satan as an object of mankind to make a choice to choose whether or not mankind, this created spirit being put in a legal body on the earth, which was to what? Represent and spread in the earth the kingdom, the concepts, the precepts of the kingdom of the Father to make earth just like heaven. But it, he wanted done, but man, because we are free more beings and we have choice, we had to choose to do that willingly. Because we were created in his likeness. I'm going deep now. We were created in his likeness. Now watch this. The father has a will, but whose will is his will subject to? Who, who is the father accountable to? He created everything. He's, he's totally uh, omnipotent, all-powerful. He created everything. Nothing created him. 
So who is his will submitted to? Huh? Okay. So you can see it. So he will create it in his likeness. Now here, here it is. He said, I'm going to commit myself to what I say. I'm going to commit my will because I'm sovereign. I'm not subject to nobody, but I got to be subject to somebody. And that somebody is going to be what I speak from myself. So he subject himself to what he say and what he said, his word. So he is bound by his word. This is why he will never, ever break his word. He always keep his word. Y'all catch this? His word will not return into him void. But it accomplished. That word accomplished in the Hebrew means to produce a manufacture. Whatever he say, if it's not there, his word will manufacture the product and make it come into existence. He'll never, ever break his word. Never break his word. Y'all catch it now? And what that did was erase any element of lawlessness in him. Lawless spirits do what they want to do. And the father can do what he want to do. You catching it? But because he is not a lawless spirit and he uh, totally eliminated any entry or any avenue of lawlessness or iniquity, he said, I'm going to bound myself to my word. So even me, myself, I don't do what I want to do. I only do what my word, what I speak out of myself that I said I'm going to do. So when he speak, he is bringing laws that govern himself. And that, and that something that's totally awesome. So he created us like that with free will. So we had to be able to choose who we would submit to and obey. You catch it? This is why the fallen angel, the unemployed cherub, the, who got kicked out, fired, was placed there, who had already exercised his own will against the will of the Father. He put him, put, let him be there, put him there, he told mankind, now you got to make a choice. You got to make a choice. There's a tree of knowledge. There's a person who possessed knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil is all evil. If somebody doing good and they evil, they evil. I don't care what they do. Well, he was a good man, but he evil. Though. He do good and evil. And that makes him what? Evil. evil. You can't be a racist and say you're good. And you, you, you for black folk, but you're a racist. Okay, how many grants you give? All right, so freedom of choice. Number two, I got to move through it. Choices are a daily what? Choices are a daily responsibility. Number three, here we go. Not making choices do not eliminate the responsibility. We are all responsible to make choices daily. If you don't make the choice, if I don't make a choice, it still doesn't eliminate me of being responsible for making choices. Some people don't want to choose, want other people to choose for them. Guess what? You still got to give account for not making that choice. Still got to give account. Well, what are we supposed to do? You know, in the ministry, you know, early, you know, we started up. That's, I, I, we finally got there. I was so excited what I saw yesterday, you know, that I didn't get into it purposely because you all are ministers. You all are here to represent the kingdom. You have assignments. You have service to do in the earth. And you got to do it. You do what you do. I do what I do. So even when I showed up, a pastor, I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to say it but three times. <laughs> when previous years, uh, pastor, what about it? Okay, do this. Okay, do that. Okay, do it. Pastor's making all the choices, but that's your ministry. That's your assignment. And so what I saw, and I'm going to talk about it you know, a little later, is that I saw actually... Uh, uh, saints taking ownership and taking responsibility for their assignments and not depending on the pastor to make all the choices. You catching it? So even though you don't make the choice, you don't make the choice, responsibility is still there. Now making choices, here we go, for some of you to make quick choices. Making choices without what? Information, Information is a choice of what? Ignorance. ignorance. It, it's going to result, it's ignorance because of lack of knowledge, not uh, proper information, not a bad word. And it's going to produce failure. Y'all catch it? And it's going to produce what? Failure. failure. All right. And the scripture says a person who makes choices quick is not wise. The opposite of being wise is being a fool. The opposite of being wise is being a what? The opposite of wisdom is foolishness. Let's just go and say fool, not a bad word. It's telling me that I'm ignorant of knowledge and I'm making choices based on insufficient information. Now, here is why. All right. Wise counsel are the result, I mean, wise choices are the result of what? Information and what? Counsel. Y'all see it? Mm -hmm. Number five, wise choices are the result of what? Information and counsel. Counsel, here's mentors, here are wise people, people been around a while, 
This is where many of you have messed up. You think you know everything, and you don't live life, and you just know what you want to do, but you negate counsel. Someone